Okay, John 15. Uh, men, please sign up and get yourself registered to come to the third wave. Just It's on the 7th, which is the first Saturday of <clears throat> March, three weeks from yesterday. Get in there. Get you, It's only $5. Invite people. I told our, we have um, prayer for this event every Sunday between services. Any man, you're welcome to join me in my office. And if you can, if you got a smartphone, you can go on to our website. You can then scroll down to the third wave special event, click it, takes you to the page. Then all you have to do is send it as a text. And if you have, if you, if you have friends that you could text them, what will show up on their text is the banner with just click it and it'll take them right to the right to the page. So it's an easy way to communicate. And what I what I've been telling you, if somebody's on your heart, pray in tongues for two or three minutes, or in, or English or Spanish or Filipino, just <laughs> pray over them and ask God to prepare their heart to the invitation, and that they would they would respond because faith had preceded the invitation and then just send it let's go fishing go fishing who knows who and yeah and they don't have to be saved to come any we'll take them in any condition god takes everybody just as they are right that's what cammy just said They're, he's here to heal the brokenhearted so stretch out thank you okay john 15 that uh i'm going to jump where we kind of close and then jump ahead into something so 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 wonderful john 15 verse 9. John 15 verse 9. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Jesus speaking. Abide in my love. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. Love, we love because he first loves us. So the, the imagery today is to get ready to receive love. So that you might give away the love that you receive. You can't give away what we don't have and we can't love unless we've been loved. Jesus goes on to say, if you keep my commandments or commandment, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. We cannot love like Jesus until we've been loved by Jesus. And un contrary to what would feel as a commandment, we think a commandment is something I'm told to do and now I need to observe it and do it. So we kind of, we forget that we don't have what he's commanding us to do. And so we resource ourselves, And I don't know about you, but, you know, I can only love for a certain length of time, then I get mad. Then I get upset. Then I get frazzled. Then I get frightened. Then I get terrorized. Then I, then I, then I want reciprocation. And love is the funniest thing. Love gives and forgives, and it never takes, and it never keeps. Love, God's love, gives and forgives. He never demands a reciprocation to the love he gives because he forgives with his love. So Jesus is saying, I want you to love like I loved you. So for us today, 2,000 years afterwards, I've got to find, I've got to receive his love. And I, the only place that I've found, the best place i found receiving his love is to spend time with him and to take his words and move toward him with, his, with these truths and say, Lord, I want to receive the love you have for me so that I can love like you. Then he says in verse 13, and this but will close and go on, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. 
The word life is the word suke. Suke is the Greek where we get the word psychology. It's the word for soul. Love amongst our family, the body of Jesus, communities, work, the love that he's longing to see given this agape love is one that lays down our soul so someone else's soul can have their way. Lays down our agenda so someone else can have their agenda. Lays down our being right so someone else can be right. It moves from, it, it covers instead of exposes. It's, it's so much what Jesus was all about. And love is terrifying in the fact that we're called to abide in this love. And the opposite of love is fear. And wherever, and the reason you know opposites is where they, they replace each other. That's therefore you, it's like light. You turn the light on, darkness goes. Turn the light off, darkness returns. Love. You bring, you bring perfect love into, into our heart, fear is driven away. That love is disconnected in our own conscious awareness. We feel that it's not present. We're not, a, we're not discerning, recognizing, enjoying the love of God. Fear is coming back. Love leads, empowers faith. Fear empowers lust. Lust and faith look almost the same because you can't, ever, you can't really tell in your own heart, let alone somebody else's, am I lusting or am I believing? Because they're both aggressive. Faith is aggressive toward the, world, the workings of God and his goodness and his provision and re- relentless to receive the blessing. But lust is fearfully motivated that if it doesn't grab now, it won't get it later. And so it's a taker, where this is a giver. And it goes on and on, the two different trees that grow, and one is full of life, the tree of life, and the other is full of death. Just as Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd, and I lay down my life so that others can live, and the thief, he only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. <clears throat> so when love starts coming intentional love when Jesus starts showing up he is love it's love can feel love is <coughs> can, uh, love is affects our emotions but it's not an emotion but it'll affect our emotion love affects my decisions and my actions but it is not a decision an action love is a person love is Jesus Christ God is love the only thing God calls him so he said I am love So this love person, God so loved the world, he said, I'm going to place my son in in place of its sin and judgment. And Jesus said, I so love the bride that I'm going to have my church, my glorious church, that I'll place myself as that offering so I have the ability to speak life with my words. And the Holy Spirit's here going, you know what? I'm just going to be the divine prepare to beautify the bride into the fullness of what has already been given and bring it into a a special, let me do this, clear up my throat. But it's it's all inside of love. And so, but here am I, love creates sonship and adoption and trust and reliance. And as the Lord says to me often, you don't have to be afraid, I love you. And it sounds so simple, but it's like Cammy saying, you know, I can heal broken hearts. I do that. You don't have to be afraid. I love you. And yet we can return to conscious decisions that God is more interested in the way we, the way, the conduct of our life and the thoughts that we hold. And although they all affect us, they're not what love comes to. Love comes to us. And love is received in a relationship with the one who loves us. And only when we are loved when we're unlovable do we ever learn how to love the unlovable. When love, how to be, when we, when we feel his affection toward us, when we feel not beautiful or, or um, becoming, and, we, and he comes and he says, I love you, it changes everything. And it's a relational love. I have a grandson, Noah, 
And he's really cute. He's at this place where he'll often just, either because I said something or Cammy said something that he liked the sound of or because sometimes it's just, he'll just say, I love you, Grandpa. And it, always that invokes my response. I love you too, Noah. And it's something about love connection. We're not meant to be righteous people. We're meant to be loved people. And being loved makes us righteous because we believe in the one who gave us the right to being righteous through what he did. It dismisses it. It's like we're meant to be loved. We're meant to love. We're, we, we can't love unless we're being loved. And the love that I found is, I had, because it's 2,000 years since, I didn't get to walk for three and a half years with Jesus. I didn't get to watch how he let John nuzzle in on his bosom and just could set an atmosphere and correct his disciples but love him at the same time. I didn't understand, watch his prayer life to go. But, but then again, that's how he found the Father's love was he'd spend time with the Father till the Father's affirmed and he lived and he could go, yeah, and then he could give. And, but, but we can do that with Jesus in his living word. I want to show you something that... Uh, I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians 13. <clears throat> I'm calling... Recently, right now I'm telling the Lord, your love terrifies me. It's terrifying love. Why? Because it shakes my fear up. If, if God comes to pl- displace fear in my life, you can be pretty sure you'll feel the fear before it's gone. <laughs> right? It's like, you know, the old psychology idea. You've got you to feel it to heal it. You know, you've got you to gotta process. So all of a sudden, you know, I, I look at myself kind of like this uh, beehive. Just basically, as long as I move slow and everything doesn't, doesn't interrupt anything, I'm pretty cool. But shake me up a little bit. Displace me. Put me in a panic mode. Try to undo my control. And all of a sudden, I'm like a jar full of bees. <laughs> And you just, and you just, I don't want the lid off. No, I don't want the lid off. No, we're not going to have the lid off. I, last time I took that lid off, we did not like what would happen. Right? And that's the reason what that fear gets frightened. I don't know, but is Jesus frightening to you? Do you remember, do you remember the story of the Chronicles of Narnia? The Penske family? Kids, children? Pepsi. That family. <laughs> they're on their way, they're in Narnia, and they're on their way to try to uh, follow the journey they're in. And they, and they meet with the beaver, and the beaver's telling them that things are coming, it's going to be good, the, the, the winter slime. Aslan's been seen, he's been seen. So they're going, well, who's this Aslan? They go, he's a lion. And so the question is, is he safe? And the beaver says, of course not, he's a lion. But he's good. But he's good. And, and that's the conflict I find myself in, is that do I let love invade the place that fear has kept me safe? Do I let him, do I, I've had to say this, I surrender to your love. I, I don't want fear of what I'm going to get punished. That's what fear brings. Fear brings the expectation of punishment or something, you're going to pay for this. I don't want to do that and void that. Instead, I'm just going to say, God, you said, I don't have to be afraid. You love me, so I'm going to surrender to love. It's the same thing that happens in marriage. I've done so many weddings in, in the early on days, coin, you know, in exchanging of the rings. The wife would give her husband a ring and say, as you place this ring on, your fi- on his finger, and as you do say, with this ring, I thee wed. I give it as a token of my faith and a token of my love. And I open up my heart to be a wife to you. And, you know, in the moment, it's usually pretty cool. But wait for a few months. (laughs) Right? Wait for a few months, you know. Ephesians tells us, I have to submit to love. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, submit to your husband, as the Christ does to the church. Submit to imperfection. See, that's why it can get frightening, really frightening very fast. So First Peter 3, he says, follow Sarah's example. You try to just stay in, in, an, in a posture of hold your place, don't lose your place, do good, 
And don't let fear terrorize you. Because fear will make you act and seek to control versus to yield. Uh, 39 years I've been married to Kemi. And I ask God to forgive me every day in prayer these days. I, I marvel that she could come along and just say, it, it, you know, you're basically, I know you're an idiot, but I trust God anyway. <laughs> you know, I'll let, I'll, you know, I'm, you gotta, somebody's got to be in charge, and it's obvious you want to be, so go ahead. <clears throat> and, and learn that secret of ducking every time I've got some great idea. And she's going, that great idea is going to hurt me. She's learned to duck and let it hit me. Instead of turning around and just, you know, ah, yeah, yeah. Trust me, we've had those moments. Always, will always, because it's fear. Because after a while, I can only make her so afraid so long, right? And then she's going to overreact and go, I mean, seriously, I've never asked her to go down to South Central LA. We're going to move there, hang out, don't know what to do. And I don't really want anybody to know we're married. So just say you're my sister and if somebody wants you, have her. I've never put her in that much of harm's way, but I've done a lot of stuff just like it. Just like it. Just like it. Just stubborn, unwilling. I know what I'm doing. And you know, ladies, right? If your husband's stubborn and unwilling, he knows what he's doing, what can you do about that? Nothing. You can pray. You can trust God. You can do good. And you can be unterrified. And you can get your spirit man, your inner man, beautiful. But otherwise, you're, you're pretty well on the ride. Now, Love is from Jesus. And as he loves me, and he says, submit to my love, and he's perfect, I'm terrified. And we've all been in those moments where we can say, that husband is about to do something that's going to cost our entire family grief. Right? How many? Well, I won't do a show of hands. <laughs> <laughs> I could create some intense fellowship this afternoon. Why did you raise your hand? <laughs> but we all know what that feels like when <clears throat> you have that moment. Do I control? Do I threaten? Do I stop this? Or do I give permission? Do I point out? Do I give my advice? Or is it not really welcome? Or do I trust God and let him have his place. Isn't that frightening? That's what it feels like to follow Jesus, but worse, I think. I mean, for a man, I don't have that experience because I'm the one who's supposed to always know what it's supposed to do, so therefore, you know, <laughs> that's my pressure is to lay down my life and do the right thing. So I don't even know what it's like to follow someone in that kind of submission. <clears throat> I voluntarily choose to let you Take care of me. Now, I know that that's, you know, in a, in a healthy relationship, husband and wife, there's honesty, there's conversations, there's recognition of strengths, there's, hey, you're good at this, go for it, you take the lead. It's, I'm not talking about that, but, but let's just go back for, just back to the beginning point. God's image of love that he has for us, the closest he can give is to the church. And Jesus says, as I as the Father has loved me, I have loved you. Abide in my love. As I kept my Father's commandment, you keep my commandment. So there's a connection, a union. And, he, and Ephesians says that that's the love imagery that he wants to give us to enjoy. Come inside and submit to my love. And love comes by knowing, love comes through believing. Love comes from the Word of God, and it comes by the Spirit of God when we place ourselves in a posture of receiving. You cannot be loved without faith. You have to believe. But love is what makes faith work. It's, it's a place of posture. Now, what I believe today, before we finish in a few minutes, God wants to love us. He wants to connect every heart and it doesn't matter where you are in the journey. You may, have, you may have not been loved for so long, you just turn that thing off. You think, I just can't be cherished by anyone. But God cherishes you. He delights in you. He, he came, he brought you here to bring himself to you today. So the posture of letting God love us, 
I believe it's where he's taking us to so we can love. So we can love. And we'll keep growing this sound until we experience it. Because the glory of God is the love of God. The love of God is the glory of God in manifestation. Jesus said in John 17 when he prayed to his father before the garden, he said, God, Father, I want you to bring me to the glory that I had before, with you from the foundation of the world so that they may see your love you've had for me from the foundation of the world. I want to be returned to your glory and love. He equates the two. If God is love, what could glory be but God loving? And yet we, we get afraid because our slavery mentality is ready to kick into, I have to do what's right. If I don't do what's right, nothing will work right. And they have to do what's right so that I can do what's right. So if they don't do what's right, then I won't get right. So just all that agitation. So the jar is like this. And God's saying, come on, turn off, open the lid. That's, that's letting God's love into the fear. You, it's, you don't get rid of the fear and then love comes. Love comes into the fear. And you go, Lord, I'm, I have a very familiar feeling right now. I know this feeling. And I know what it's, I, I'm aware of what I'm afraid of, what punishment is connected. And I'm also now aware of what I could, would do to try to avoid this to grow up and blow up. But I don't want to be the controller of my life anymore. I want you to love me here. So I want your love. I'm going to let, I'm going to, I, just, I have to just submit to your love here. Let your love come. I receive your love. I surrender to your love. doesn't mean that you try to then pump it up and, I got it, I'm loved. No, it's, it's actually a maturing posture. Because your soul will betray us all the time. Mine does. But when, it, when I start realizing that's not the issue about what I do right now, the issue is that I'm opening my heart to. And it's in the midst of imperfection. 1 Corinthians 13, please. <clears throat> Um, this used to be the condemnation chapter for me. 1 Corinthians 13, 1. It was the condemnation chapter. I mean, oh dear God. Because I would try to invoke this. I would say yes to love, but I couldn't carry love past the day I said yes. And I'd go out. But just listen to the power of love. Not as a to-do, but as him. This is God. This is God. But he begins by saying, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. So it is possible to move in all of the sound and beauty and discovery, tongues of angels and men, full of light and illumination, and clarity and brilliance, not in love. And because of that, we sound more like brass, hitting pots and pans and discombobulated, just irritating. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, whew, I haven't done any of that yet. <laughs> but I have not love. I am nothing. Nada. Nothing. A non, non-existent. Does, not even one is what that word nothing means. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, I haven't done that either. And though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Nada. Yeah, nothing. Just Love suffers long and is kind. In marriage, we often will put that in for each other. For tonight, today, let's just let it be God. And as I describe God, I want you to receive each word of description and let him come, because this is who he is. God, Father, our Lord Jesus, who brought forth all of this love. Jesus suffers long, and he's kind. Kind means he's helpful. If Jesus came to your house, and he showed up unexpected, and your house was a mess, and the dishes were all all over, he wouldn't go. He would say, can I help? He'd start washing. It's helpful. Love, Jesus, Father, 
does not envy. He's not looking to take from us. He's looking to give. He's not pulling away or suspicious. He's giving. He's not envying. Jesus does not parade himself. He's not puffed up. When I first started to let this be who God is, I had to ask myself, well, why don't you parade yourself? And he says, I don't need to make myself any bigger than I already am. I'm not here to force myself on anyone. I'm waiting for those to see and discover. I'm all substance. Why don't you puff yourself up? You said, I'm glory. I can't puff up. You just imagine Jesus going, I'm going to use the Instagram to get famous. He just doesn't do that. He doesn't raise his voice in the street. A bruised reed he won't break and a smoldering wick he won't put out. He's just gentle. Love does not, Jesus does not behave rudely. Does not seek his own. We can move him away from us faster than he's so quick. Holy Spirit's always the first one to leave and the last to protest. And flesh is always the last to leave and the first to protest. But when he comes, he's, he's coming. He doesn't seek his own. He's not trying to get us to be better so he feels better about himself. He's not trying to get us to quit sinning so he can do nice things for himself. He's, he's just, he's here to heal and to bring life. He does, he's not provoked. Uh, no matter what you do, we cannot force Jesus to, to be brought up into a a position where that's it, I'm done, I'm not going to have anything to do with you. He's just, just love. He's just love. He's not, he thinks no evil, means he doesn't keep an account. He doesn't even remember what you did yesterday. You may, and you need to confess it so you can let go of it, but he doesn't. He's already dealing with you and his son, and his son sees you in his resurrection, and he's now interceding for our, our, our perfection. So it's so crazy. And incidentally, whenever you read about the perfect bride or the perfect, perfect perfection, it's talking about coming into love. Because perfect love casts out fear, and love is the bond of perfection, and it brings you into the perfect, the perfect man. Love does not rejoice in iniquity. He's not satisfied when someone gets their way, insists upon their belief, or forces someone else to join him, and is applying the will of man upon other man. He, he's not at all like that. He rejoices in the truth. He's, he's a truth bearer. And love always brings truth, and truth will find the only place it can be received is inside of love. That's why when God gets us to a moment we can help us discover something inside of truth, you always feel massive love massive. If you ever feel condemnation while you're reading the scripture or in prayer, stop, reboot, reject, and come back into total, complete acceptance in Jesus Christ. Stop and do it. We have bad emotion memories, and we're used to being berated or told we're no good or tell us we have to work harder. And if you have those emotions with God, those are not God invoking emotions. Those are lies that are trying to counterfeit a relationship with God and make you afraid of him, and resisting his coming. So the reboot is you go, whoa, that, you know, I often say, does it feel good? If it doesn't feel good, it's probably not God. Amen. Because he's here to, he liberates, he's releasing. He bears all things. Funny, bear means to put a roof over. Believes all things. Jesus believes in us. Jesus believes in himself and he believes in us, in himself and his ability to perfect and the Holy Spirit's ready to just make it happen and they're all going to have fun. He believes all things, hopes all things, love does this, endures all things, means to put a, a floor under. So he puts the floor under that we can be rooted and grounded in love and he puts a, sea, a, a roof over us so we can be covered in love. That's why he's not exposing sin. You ever, you ever afraid that he's going to take your sin and show others? That's never, that's again a lying spirit. He'll never do that. You'd have to have a whole lot of authority and you have to live a whole big public life and you have to live a persistent long life of hypocrisy and still I doubt he'd ever do it. 
What good is it to strip somebody of their dignity and take them upon and show their nakedness? You, you know, Noah, you know, we all talk, no, Noah, Noah fell drunk and, and, and got himself naked and his son went and found him and went and told his brothers. And he came under a curse because he had exposed his father's nakedness. His two brothers, they both grabbed a, a blanket and they walked backwards and laid it on Noah and then walked out and never looked and never saw. That's, how we're, that's what love is. Love covers the multitude of sin. It's the only place transformation can take place because you know that in the exposing of yourself to love, love will remove the stain and embrace you. And that's where confessed sin becomes light. And hidden sin binds us into the darkness. But it's not the sin. If anything, if I've learned anything, is as soon as I'm sinning, tell God about it. He already knows. It's not like he's getting news clips. I tell him why. And if you need to tell him, you're just going to do it anyway. And we'll talk about it later. Be transparent. Be honest. Be open. Because he's there to release us. Love never fails. Love never fails. In that 16 descriptions of love, there are eight to do that love does, and there's eight that love doesn't. Which shows you that God, in the love of God, it just holds a lot of things in place until something's time to move into the better place. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. The word fail and vanish away literally means it becomes a non-existent thing, not necessary, doesn't matter. Same thing Jesus did to the devil. That's why the devil's so upset about what happened because he kind of got put out of the equation. Except for when God has advantage of having this little, you know, little, you know, kind of a resistance partner. <laughs> but this kind of tongues are just going to actually one day stop. So there's prophecies that are going to become no, no equation. There's going to be tongues that will just stop. There's knowledge that's going to vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. Now think about this. I, I, to surrender to love will often mean that I am letting go of the, the fears associated to some of this that I've been in. We're, we're in verse uh, 9, please. We know in part, we prophesy in part. We're not going to get healed by better prophecy. You're not going to get restored in your life because you learn more. You're going to, we're going to become what we were called to be because we get loved more. Because we are well loved. We, we, we just, all Jesus did would get in God, Papa's presence and in effect you'd say, Father, I love you. Daddy, I love you. Abba, I love you. Abba would say, I love you too, son. I love you. Every time God spoke publicly, he would say, this is my beloved son. When he spoke to Jesus in, in a prayer moment, he said, you are my beloved son. He's an affirmer. He can do so because Jesus took all of the sin on our life that's present and to the future and just expunged it. And in Christ, we can receive all of the love that was merited to Christ simply because we believe in Christ. And we can pull on that. But when that which is perfect, verse 10, has come, Perfect, perfect love, perfection, maturity, completion. When the perfects come, then that which is in part will be done away. Can you imagine as Jesus gets closer, he is love, and he begins to call his bride into his embrace. We'll, ha we'll know less, talk less. <laughs> Things will just start falling off. Some of the, you know... We will just, it won't matter because love is coming. Love is coming. Everything that's in portions, part, part being done away. When I was a child, I, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So apparently in this chapter, prophesying, speaking with tongues, moving mountains, giving everything away, being burnt, is childish stuff. And the maturing is this perfect reception of love. 
And living from love, trusting in love, submitting to love, him. For now we see in a mirror dimly, verse 12, but then face to face. Now this is where, Dan, after you come on up. This is where this gets interesting. I found in my life for a lot of, I wanted to, I wanted to hold a relationship with God based on knowledge and obedience. I did not want him to have a right to send me away. And nor did I really want him to have a right to tell me what to do. I wanted to be sure that I took, I got his list and I kept it right. And at the end of the day, I put him back in a box and I could get, go on with my day. Be okay with myself because I kept the list. And so then this face-to-face relationship starts being introduced. Hey, how are you? And Jesus is that unsuspecting, pops in when you're not ready, when nothing looks good. Hi, I love you. I know in part, but then I will know just as I am also known. The word known means to be known in a repeated fashion in a certain place to which you are recognized as who you are. And you will know Jesus in that same experience. Now abide faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. So the love that Jesus is... See, you might be on the journey of dying, where where life is not working, where things are not working the way you, they said in the scripture. You, it could be love is present in death. Love is present in resurrection. Love begins with death in order to obtain resurrection. When I come alive to the truth of the word and give God just simple, you are this for me in death, I conquer death. Because I do no longer allow my circumstances to define who God is for me. But I let truth define who God is for me. And soon the Holy Spirit starts to come. And if I open the door to receive love, then I can... Actually, well, let's just do that. Let's, I want us to sing, but I'm going to go really slow. The Jesus song that Bill did so well. We bring up, we'll go off the scripture, but just to Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <clears throat> when we sing this, instead of making it just a, a, a declare, declaration and decree that it is, sing to Him. You can sit, you can stand, close your eyes. Most of us know this song. It's back in the 70s, it came out. <clears throat> No, 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 no. Okay. Just follow me. Okay. I, 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 you do it beautiful, but I just, I want to, I want to not be on time. Jesus. Jesus. You can all join. about your name your master savior Jesus like the fragrance after the rain. Let him come, let him come. He's coming into your life, to your heart, to your home. Jesus, 
Jesus, Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim King and kingdoms shall all pass away but there's something about that name now I'm going to sing you can follow this is easy your name is Jesus again Jesus sad hearts weep no more in his presence let it be you have healed the broken Hearted, open wide the prison doors. You are able to deliver evermore. Sing to him, let him be that for you this moment. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus there's just something about that name Master Savior like a fragrance he's coming to heal he's coming to make whole mm, Jesus Jesus sing with me Jesus let all and earth proclaim kings and kingdoms may all pass away but there's something something about your name receive your name Jesus all that your name brings we receive your love we receive your forgiveness we receive your healing we receive our hearts that were broken in tiny pieces put back together however you would like we receive you the king of life and let death coming out of our being and out of our lives we receive you, we receive you, we receive you, Jesus. We receive. Your name is Jesus. We're going to use it. Jesus. Sad hearts weep no more. Sad hearts weep no more. Remember you, that your joy might be full. You have healed the brokenhearted. Open wide the prison doors. Wide the prison You're able to save forevermore. Able to deliver evermore. 
you open your heart as you're standing here be presence tell them where you are tell them what's happening in your life be honest and invite him into the place where fear is abiding where torment is trying to take you from a place of rest let him in he's come he's a healer a deliverer a redeemer he's making a new place for himself oh he's a lover of our soul he's a deliverer receive receive yes yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord oh yes my king my king my king oh we holy king face to face we behold him we see him his love comes radiating out of his eyes and toward us his glory his love personified made directed toward us he picks us up and pulls us unto his bosom he calms our fears quiets us and then he drives them out as he fills love where it once was he he loves faith in what he is who he is because then faith allows who he is to be who he is for us right now there's a moment right now of healing coming to our, our brokenness, our fragmentation. He's collecting all the pieces, putting us back together as he dreams in perfection and in love. <clears throat> we'll not be exposed. We'll be coverers of others' nakedness. We will understand the covering of our nakedness. We will rejoice in how how abundant he is toward us and be in the same manner toward one another love me Jesus that I might love like you Jesus say that with me love me Jesus that I might love like you Jesus mm -hmm. pass away but there's something about your name kings and menacing kingdoms kings and kingdoms shall all pass away but there's something about your Lord, as we go to lunch and enjoy a great Filipino meal, may we enjoy your love and carry it, your love with us. May you seek us out to love us this week. May we encounter love in volumes, overwhelming times. Beloved, I would say to you by the Spirit of God that if you'll give God some time this week, he will love you well. He will love you in his word. He will love you in his spirit. He will love you. And you will grow in confidence in the love experience. He's ready to love his bride into her beauty. Freedom, freedom, freedom comes in the love that God brings to us. So I bless every member of the living body of Jesus here and online and wherever you all catch up with us at this moment. I declare that you are so loved. And that love is coming toward you with such intensity and completeness and relentlessness, driving out the fears that would have tormented and separated and made a lie of truth for you. And the truth is now taking over the lie, displacing it. And the love is taking over the fear and displacing it. And the light is overtaking the darkness and dispersing it and the joy is overtaking the sorrow and removing it and the beauty is coming for the ashes and undoing it and there is praise coming because it's opening the door to praise him and break free and there's redemption and all the shame and blame and hurt and wounds are all coming out coming off coming out coming off in this glorious place in this glorious place inside love Yeah.
This is a house of deep wells. He's unlocking the wells of our fathers and grandfathers. Jump in the river. Jump in the river. Yes. Unplug. Get the water flow. Dance in the river. Dance in the river. Stirring up deep, deep wells. Stirring up deep, deep water. We're gonna jump in the river. Jump in the river. Stirring up deep, deep wells. Deep, deep water, we're gonna dance in the river, dance in the river, stirring up deep, deep wells, Ooh, stirring up deep, deep water, we're gonna jump in the river, jump in the river, stir cries out. Deep cries out to you, deep cries out, deep cries out to you, we cry out, we cry out to you, Jesus. Deep cries out, deep cries out to you, deep cries out, deep cries out to you, we cry out, we cry out to you, Jesus. Lord, bless the food we're about to take. Bless the monies we're about to give. Bless our week we're about to live out. Bring about this community outreach. Let some young, chosen by God, youth or teenager or young child get that Nintendo and let there be community that comes, let people be here of the good news of the glorious Savior. May a loved body be able to love everyone. May there be an activation of every kind in this week. We declare that fear submit to love. Perfect love that has no problem crowding you out <laughs> until he dwells only. Lord, thank you for the honesty and the freedom of communication we have now with you and we will enjoy this week and bless what you're doing and don't stop until it's done the beautiful bride fully glorified fully washed fully loved well 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 in jesus name amen amen amen, amen.